And I started my, my academic journey thinking I was going to be a physicist. And I took a computer science minor because I didn't know anything about computers. And I thought I would be a crappy physicist if I didn't know how to code. Uh, and obviously, I, I fell in love with, with computer science and building stuff. Uh, did my PhD in computer science at Yale and then actually started a postdoc in, uh, uh, in applied math. During that postdoc, I actually opened my first startup, which had to do with real-time video search on TVs. And it's still a running business. It was sold a few years ago uh, to a, a, a big, uh, another big company. And my co-founder was still running that. Uh, and then I went to Yahoo uh, to work with uh, Yoel Marek in, in Israel, in, in Haifa, to run a little research group that focused on email. And that was a very exciting journey because back then, uh, again, I told you I was always like into big data. And my only question coming into Yahoo was, where's the biggest data and the gnarliest problems? And everybody said, make it, right? And if think back then everybody was talking about web scale as being big web scale was tiny compared to how many emails yahoo had had at this point yahoo mail had already existed for 10 years they already had very many petabytes of data which even hadoop was still kind of young then right and so working with that was incredibly challenging and, and crazy and, and fun and after three years i had the opportunity to actually move to new york and run the entire research lab out of New York and take over a bunch of other research on ads, on, on, uh, on uh, uh, like spam, on abuse, on security, on anomaly detection, on finance, on sports, on whatever, pretty much all the machine learning platforms, platforms at Yahoo, uh, the research side of it, not the platform themselves at that point, uh, and build a team there. That was the first time I actually got to build the lab from scratch, which was very, very exciting. And we basically did the, three years later, we had the opportunity to do that at Amazon. So I was very, very, very fortunate when Yahoo was just being uh, bought by Verizon, by Verizon, Yahoo was dismantling the lab, which was heartbreaking because that was a, like, uh, a labor of love for, for many, many years for many people, including myself. And seeing that kind of being disbanded was uh, really, uh, nothing short of a heartbreak, but uh, <laughs> but kind of just serendipitously, right exactly at the same time, uh, AWS was starting a whole new organization called Amazon AI, whose mission is to build machine learning platforms at Amazon for cloud users. Back then, it was only Swami Shiva Subramanian, who is the VP, who is still in charge of it, and Alex Smola, who uh, is a, is a kind of luminary in the field of machine learning and also a close friend. And he reached out to me immediately and said, hey, you know, we have a center in, in Seattle and in Palo Alto. Why don't you start the center in New York and build the lab there uh, and take over kind of the building of, of what would end up becoming SageMaker. Uh, and for somebody who's been building machine learning platforms for my entire life, you know, somehow doing that at AWS was, you know, uh, an opportunity I couldn't give up. Uh, and so I moved and we did that for about, we did that for about three years. It took us almost two years to launch SageMaker. Uh, when we launched it, it was, in my opinion, not even ready, <laughs> but that, that is the Amazon way. You kind of launch something and then you iterate. Um, uh, but that was, that was a wild ride. And, you know, that was the first time where I actually saw, uh, kind of, uh, how the world works on the belly of the beast, you know, uh, and, and see how to manage services, how to, how to build a uh, customer base, you know, how to, how to build a service inside AWS. And three years later, kind of uh, the, uh, the understanding that something like Hypercube needed to be built was just, uh, you know, uh, just uh, becoming irresistible. And again, it was incredibly tough to leave AWS. It was, you know, I've had a, a, an amazing journey there and I, I still miss that place dearly. I mean, I have a, still a lot of really great friends there and I miss a lot of the aspects of working there. But uh, yeah, building something like Hypercube has been 
you know, in some sense unavoidable to me and in the same time, uh, an even more exciting journey.